Good afternoon and welcome to the Victoria County Municipal Council. Welcome to our meeting for November 15th, 2021. Just want to uh, acknowledge that this meeting is being held in Unamagi, one of seven traditional districts of the Mi'kmaq the Mi'kmaq people, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So with that acknowledgement, we are going to open council. The agenda has been circulated to you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda this evening? Uh, just a couple of things, Warden, under, under committees, uh, the FCM and uh, Federation of Agriculture. Thank you very much, Councillor Patterson. I've added those under committee reports and uh, we'll accept your report at that juncture in the meeting. Any other additions or deletions? Uh, it's been moved by Councillor McNeil. We adopt the agenda with the noted changes. Uh, do we have a seconder, please? Second. Second by Deputy Warden Daphne. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. The agenda has been approved. So our first item on our agenda tonight, we are pleased to welcome Patsy LeBlanc. She is going to make a presentation on behalf of the St. Anne's Time Bank. Time Bank. And uh, thank you. Welcome to Council, Patsy. And uh, I just very quickly, I'm sure there are a number of councillors that you're not familiar with. I would just ask Council just to give your name and your district so Patsy will know to whom she's speaking. We'll start with uh, District Number 5, please. Well, thank you, Warden. I'm Fraser Patterson, District 5, uh, Patsy, and you used to live in my district at one time, so I, I do know you. <laughs> uh, hi, Patsy. Larry Daphne, Fingerna Speech. Nice to meet you. Jack York in District 7. I'm Norman McTown, District 8, up in Cape North. Uh, Paul McNeil, District 1, I own a right to the Red Baron. Hi, Patsy. Perla McLeod, District 2. Prolongba, your district. <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me here, but also I have a special thanks because this year it is the county that's supporting St. Anne's Bay Time Bank. Um, and if it wasn't without that support right now, I'm not certain how well we'd be able to keep continuing. So I thank you for that. I wanted to mention a couple of things, and I have little notes so I don't get off track because I tend to do that. Um, I wanted to give you an update on St. Anne's Bay Time Bank. I'm not going to go in how it works. I know you've had that presentation in the past and people have spoken about that. But I will give you a little update as to what we're doing presently. And I have an ask. And I'll leave that until the end. Um, Time Bank has been now functioning and operating and continues for the last four and a half years. Currently, our membership is just below 200. I think it's 197. And with that, over 3,500 hours have been exchanged between members. Now, that means group events, um, personal events where we've gone to Woodstack for someone else and help them, to individual requests that have been answered. So that's where those hours come from. In the last couple of months, we've made a few changes. One is we have hired Laurel Shannick, and Laurel is now our, what we call our membership coordinator. <laughs> and her focus is to be involved with the members. Uh, we found over the last couple of years, Time Bank is a computer program, and it's, it, it's not without its drawbacks, I guess. So, now we are encouraging people when they need something, when they want to request something, or whether they want to offer something to give Laurel a call. We've tried computer training. You know, I've, over the last four years, I think we've learned a few things. <laughs> we've tried computer training. We tried cheat sheets. We've given them to members. We've helped them. And still, it's a stumbling block. It's an obstacle. So now what we're doing is saying, and I gave you all some cards tonight, now we're saying call 295-8786, and Laurel will help you. you know, she can put the message on, she can make the request, she can look up the people perhaps who are already listed that would, you know, if you call up and, as I did, and want my windshield wipers replaced, good day to have that. Um, 
she will look up to see if anyone helps with maintenance repairs. So there's lots of ways to do it. So we're thankful for that. We're also in the midst of having local neighborhood meetings and community meetings. So in the St. Anne's Bay region, for instance, we divide the neighborhood up into three divisions. I mean, even as you know, that district alone, I think, is 90 kilometers around the bay or 70 kilometers. So we're having three meetings, neighborhood meetings there, where we're asking people, what is it in your community that you would like to see happen? We've done those before, and when we do those, that's when people seem, they come out. They come out, they talk about what they want to do as an, an event or a community happening, but they also connect with each other. The more people seem to connect with each other, the more they share interests and skills with other Time Bank members. So that's the focus, and that's the, the way we set it up. So we, we've done one, we have two more and to happen in November and in early December we're having a welcome to our community information fair that will happen on Sunday December 5th so that's like you know new residents hopefully will come out new people have moved into the area and as I say new residents and old timers but I'm not sure what the proper term is there but uh, come out and get acquainted with the new neighbors you have. And we also have some information resources that day. We have some people coming to set up tables to give information to the community on the services that are being offered. Then we, my role is looking at how are we going to take what's worked in a model we've developed over the last four years and take it to the rest of the county. So, to date, um, this is one of the reasons I've come here tonight, but to date we do have members that go from Bedeck to Cape North. We have in the Bedeck region alone, prob it's close to 18 to 20 members. North of Smoky, we have about the same. But what happens is they, they have a membership, they join Time Bank, and then it sits. They're not active. And if you don't become active in something, you, you know, it just nothing happens for you. So what I would like to see is that I would like to, and I've started this in Bedeck, um, and I was in Inganish on Friday, and I spoke to the Lunch and Learn group that gets together, and I was there, and there was 27 people there for that luncheon, and I spoke to them about this also. And I'm also making a connection in Bedeck with Bold, and I'm just in the midst of that and discussing that and whether they're the, the group to help me. What you need in a community, and I'm sure most of you know this, and we did this in St. Anne's Bay, you need some people in the district of the county who want to get passionate and enthusiastic about a time bank. You know, I can talk all I want and I can do it from a distance, and that's all great and fine. But the people who live in the community are the ones who can really help. And I'm developing a framework that I can work with those different regions in the county so that they can get, you know, it can be one or two people. It could be a group. It doesn't, but it doesn't have to be like an organization like BOLD. It can be, if you can identify a couple of people locally who want to get enthused about sharing information, interests, skills with neighbors, whether they want to connect with other neighbors, whether they want to help other neighbors, we can help with the rest. We can do things like Laurel and myself, for example, we'll take Bollandry, for example. If there was a couple of people there who were enthused about talking about a time bank, I would go out, I would speak to them, I'd present to them what it's all about, and then we will work with that organization to help them with anyone who wants to join. You know, you join a time bank, but what are your interests, what are your needs? It's the people in the local area that that's gonna help. So I guess that's my ask. Um, one of, and I will be doing, uh, you know, post on local Facebooks about this, but 
there's no newspaper any longer that we can kind of you know advertise in or say what we're doing but what I'm hoping is that each of you can go back and say something or in your districts in your and share that information that I bring tonight and that people get in touch with myself and then we take it from there thank you very much um, so I, I'm sure there's a number of questions Patsy if it's okay and yes we, we just kind of go from district to district so I think we'll start at the top of the island and Councilor McDonald and any questions or comments for tonight's presentation sir uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, thank you, Patsy, for the presentation. I do know that the Bay St. Lawrence Community Center does have a small time bank yeah. representation. I think it's just two ladies that work at the center there. Mm -hmm. But I guess um, if, to go back and discuss with them, is there is there initial cost or start up? No, there isn't. So uh, Dietra, we know, uh, by the way, from there. She's also a member of our time bank. Um, there isn't any startup costs, and if anything, we have put in the budget um, that you approved <laughs> for there's a, up to $2,000 that can go back to the community. If the group decides that they want their own time bank, and that's a discussion that people may want to have. Right now, St. Anne's Bay Time Bank is for all residents of Victoria County. But there could be a group that says, well, no, we want to have North of Smoky Time Bank and we want it to be our own. The, there is no cost for the first year and the only cost would be the, the price that you pay for the web development because that is a, something you buy. For the first year, that's, there's no cost and after that it goes just according to how many members you have. So if it's zero to 50, it's, and I'm just guessing at this, it's maybe 100 a year or 150. Um, but we're larger than that, so our bill, of course, is, is a little bit higher than that. But no real startup costs. But we are offering, if there's four groups, we can offer like $500 to the people or the group or the organization who is willing to take something on. You know, they could use that for promotion or some type of web development or if they had to hire someone for that type of thing. So we can actually support that. Thank you. Welcome. Councillor Oregon, any questions or comments? Great presentation. Um, I have no questions. Uh, it's a lot to think about, and I, I will know. be passing on the information. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Yes, thanks, Patsy. Uh, great information as usual. And just wondering, age-wise, uh, do you find most of the members are in seniors or uh, younger yeah. members or in? I guess I'm just wondering, are kids getting involved in yeah. it is what I'm wondering. Not as much as we'd like, okay. and that's one of our hopes for the future, and actually we're putting in a proposal soon to ask for funding to do a little more with younger people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we found is now we have more younger people. Yes. <laughs> that was a problem for, you know, but now we have so many new people moving in. Uh, you know, I hear the school bus is quite busy these days, um, and I would like to approach the schools. Okay. Um, approximately... 68% of our members are seniors. Okay. Okay. But we also have some newer families who are joining now. So couples, you know, newer couples with younger children. So we are seeing a difference. Okay. It's, it's coming. No, that's good. And I'm just thinking, some, just thinking some of the younger kids, it might be good character building for them to start out this way and, uh, yeah. and learn how to help other people. So. Yes, and I agree. And I would love to be able to go through the high schools too to see, because I believe some students have to do some work. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and then we also will record any hours that they do and what they do, so that's all will be tracked. Mm -hmm. And statistically, they could use that for future careers or future things. So okay. It's a great well, idea. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you, Ward. Uh, congratulations, Patsy, on this initiative. Well, it's four years, as you've said, and uh, it's been very successful. I would think that most uh, communities have a need for... Uh, something like this. Uh, is there much call for uh, yard maintenance and snow shoveling and those kind of uh, items? There's some. And just recently, we had a meeting in North River. I hesitate, I actually forgot to mention that, on aging well. And when we had that meeting, 
there was over 20 people came to the hall and it was all about how people would age well and stay in their communities and one of the big issues was outdoor mm -hmm. chores mm -hmm. we're not we're not getting as many requests as we like because i think people are private and that's why we're trying to get the message out that Laurel is there should they give her a call. It definitely came out in that meeting. It was health care was some of the concerns, housing were concerns, but there was a big issue around chores and tasks mm -hmm. and yeah. getting ready for the winter. Mm -hmm. So we, we, that's, that's kind of something we're looking at now. And we're looking at people posting just an information thing about what suggestions do you have for people who may come and shovel my walkway? So if we do it that way, it, anyway, we hope that's going to accomplish more. Or we're going to have to get closer to people, and that's what we're trying to do, so they can tell us individually, and we'll find the support for them. Thank you. It's hard for someone to post to 300, 200 people mm -hmm. to say they want something done. Yes. I know. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McNeil. Oh, thank you, Patsy, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, just a question, like if over in Iona, the, like mm -hmm. you, you speak to people over there and they organize a group over there, would it be the same an, uh, entity that kind of coordinates everything for them and, uh, or would they have to like go through a person over in the district? I see it mutual. I see a mutual thing. I think we have to identify one to two people in each district who we would spend time with to go through the website and show them how they can help someone because I think that's, that's how it will help. Yeah. You know, you, you have a session and you invite, you know, Mary, your neighbor comes over next door and you can say to her, look, I'm going to do this for you right now. I can show you who's out there who does this type of thing. But we will provide that. Now, if there's anything that doesn't fit, we're always there. But I think it's that person who sits down with the other person that's going to make the difference. I do. Thank you, Patsy. Uh, the information is, I hear a lot of the time bank and it's a very nice uh, way to give it to the community. And like you say, you answered one of my questions about the volunteers for the young people can put some credits mm -hmm. for, when they get, for their resume. Uh, I don't know if it will be with this, uh, about you have the Stay in Our Community Project uh, grant, or oh, are you asking for a letter of support? I don't know if you know about that. Um, yes, and we've already sent some information yeah. out. Um, That's one of my questions. Um, you want uh, support from the municipality, right? Uh, we asked for three, I have to remember this because I don't have it in front of me. We asked for three different letters of support. One okay. was from, um, no, Victoria County Home Support. One was from Senior Safety. Yeah. Yeah, is that? Okay, yeah. so talking about that, uh, okay. just so we want to clarify, uh, sure. you want a partnership, we talking about partnership with, the, to the council, yeah. to the municipality, but just so you can... I, yeah, and I don't think it's, it's, it's probably what's being done already. It's like a coordination between senior safety and time bank um, as we proceed. Like, the new plan mm -hmm. is to have, oh, let me see, I wish I had it with me now, um, is to have several sessions throughout the various areas um, that will introduce newcomers mm -hmm. and youth to the people who already live in the community. Okay. Okay. What we're asking for is the senior safety mm -hmm. department to support that, perhaps be at those events, and and share the information that we're trying to get out to the community. Okay. okay. That's the type, and partnership maybe is too strong. Yeah. A word. And just to clarify, like uh, our safety officer, uh, yeah. she works yeah. so so many hours that yes. she have so she. She yes. couldn't do more than what she's in the con. Yeah. In, if, but, but, it's, but it's yeah. yeah, it's another way to get that message yeah. out. It's just it, like a, us, like a counselor. She will put her expertise in her department to just uh, yes, and to and to vet that back out so that we get our our activities full covered. Yeah. For, yes, yes. Okay, okay. But anyway, but thank yeah. you for uh, just a question about Bedek. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. I, I think a year ago, two years ago, I think maybe yes. before COVID was a, a, a meeting. Yes. Nothing come up after that. That was a wonderful meeting. It was yeah. so well attended. We did get some new, some new members oh, okay. out of that. Um, and then last year I tried to get it rejuvenated a little bit and we had, and then COVID shut us down, yeah. but we did have um, some ladies got together and they had made a plan and they wanted to have a luncheon and, and to have something okay. and everything just, you yeah. Know. Exactly. Yeah, so it's my Perfect. hope that someone from Bold will look at that too and then work yeah, with me that around that. Yeah, I think work a little bit. And I will share it for sure for my, my constituent. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll uh, save the last word to your local councillor. I'd just like to thank you for the great presentation and for all the work you've done in Time Bank and you continue to do. You're doing a fantastic job. And uh, Fraser reminded me of when he said snow removal. Uh, last year, one of the initiatives you did was the contest. It was a snow fest, snow shoveling festival. That's right, yeah. And uh, if you, I joined that festival for the exercise and to help, but I did shovel for some people. And, and when you went into the contest, you, your name got put in it. And also the person who asked for the help. Uh, their name got put in so it was it didn't matter how many hours you did or anything everybody's name just got put in and I lucked out and got a, a free gondola ski trip <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, that you was a really me. really good well I didn't go yet <laughs> so, oh you didn't go yet this winter <laughs> whatever you're saying cheeky makes snow shoveling fun yeah is that, is that what you're saying yeah. <laughs> you don't get a sore back <laughs> no it was good but yeah thank you Thank you. <laughs> no, and just to wrap up, Patsy, I want to thank you very much for your presentation tonight, and I can assure you that uh, collectively as council, we'll certainly promote and support your program as you move forward. And for my district, which is Bedeck, I'm very pleased that you're making inroads with Bold. I think that's an excellent uh, uh, organization to partner up with. They, they are multi-generational as far as they have uh, children in there, and they have middle age and they have seniors so it's it's a nice mix and anything we can do to help uh, promote um, and support just let us know i'm sure that i speak for all councillors saying that it's a program we've heard nothing but positive comments on and uh, we'd like to see it grow equally as uh, successfully in our districts as well so it's a great model to watch and it's a great model to uh, to incorporate if we if we can expand it further we i think share the same vision as you if, if we can make it county-wide it's even better so Thank you for uh, the work you've done over the last four and a half years, and we look forward to working with you as you move forward. Oh, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your time this evening. No problem. And we're going to let Patsy go because it is a dark, wet night, and she wants to head back home and travel safe, please. <laughs> so the next item up for Council this evening is the uh, minutes of October 18th. This council session those minutes have been circulated to you you've had a chance to review them are there any errors or omissions uh, with those minutes if there are none um, no corrections or no admissions should we have omissions could we have a motion to approve those minutes as circulated please i make a motion to approve the minutes as circulated thank you councillor longba do we have a seconder please Second. seconded by councillor organ all in favor aye contrary minded motions carried the minutes are approved i will uh, any old business i will refer to cao for comment please yeah, so I just have a few things for old business. Um, related to the Develop Nova Scotia meeting on broadband, I believe that meeting was held last week. Um, Cape Breton Partnership was involved in that. Um, I think it was the, the Economic Development Officer didn't, real, didn't realize I was on that committee also, so I didn't know about it, but uh, I will get um, up to speed on what happened, but there was a meeting that was held. Um, also, Erica, our Economic Development Officer, officer um, is scheduling meetings with the arena here, and we're planning on something to bring all groups together 
uh, in the area to discuss next steps. That was something that came out of the last meeting at the, the BDEC Arena uh, presentation. So those things are being um, brought together. Also, uh, letters were sent out. All letters that were requested have been sent out. Um, I'm waiting from Steve McDonald to get a meeting set up, our quarterly meeting from uh, TIR Public Works. Uh, so that will be soon. He's waiting to see when his regional manager is around to have meetings for that. Um, the acting collectively expression of interest was sent in for funding for the acting collectively tool. Uh, just to let everyone know that we found out today that we were successful in our expression of interest on that. There was three areas around Cape Breton that were uh, picked and so next steps will be happening. So we did get the money for that acting, uh, acting collectively tool for seniors. Um, another piece, we, the announcement was made today for beautification grants and the village of Bedeck through uh, the, the applicant uh, were successful in receiving beautification grant money for $25,000. Uh, and that money is set to go down to the waterfront uh, to develop down there. Um, we received a letter this week from Keith Bain on Highland Manor that Highland Manor is on the provincial list to be looked at, so that's hopefully good news. Uh, related to the school bus yard, I was in contact with Lewis McDonald there and he told me that the contractor was giving a quote to them this week and should be uh, done soon. Uh, Pearl, I know that you had uh, taken or were down to check on that. Um, yeah, is it parking or like garage? That's the, the garage, the, the garage. potholes okay. part. Um, and Erica is also leading the charge on the housing initiative and she was in contact with New Dawn to determine next steps related to that as well. So that's what I have for old business. Thank you very much. Do any councillors have any uh, business arising or yes, Councillor Morgan. Uh, Leanne, can we uh, put a letter in to the Keep Breton Center for Education for a follow up meeting and updates in the new year? Uh, regional center. Yeah, sure. Preferably mm -hmm. in the beginning of the new year, you know. Yep, Thank you. most definitely. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McNeil. Just an update on that develop meeting that we had. Uh, there was three um, people from develop on, on the Zoom call with us. Uh, they wanted to know if there was any problems with areas that have uh, have gotten the high speed already i have a contact i'll let everybody know to let let him know about it and um, also they they are looking at, into areas that aren't covered still like uh, i.e the washbook area mm -hmm. so uh, that, um, that's basically what the update was about and related to that also received an email today from john swante at bell um, on some developments in the Niels Harbor area for broadband, so. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, Deputy Warden. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Any update on the survey of the Lansing initiative? Have we heard any more back from the survey around that, uh, Leanne, or? I have not okay. received anything from him, but it, it, he, I know he's working on it, okay. but he, he told me that um, the piece that we're asking him to survey, it's not as clear cut as what we expected it was. So it may not be just a simple survey The the land may not be as big as we think that it is. Okay. If we just keep on this back, that'd be, yep, we appreciate definitely. it. Definitely. Yep. Uh, Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you. Uh, Leanne, you may have mentioned this, I might have missed it, but uh, we received uh, word today that expression of interest for the acting collectively yep. uh, and the uh, age friendly committee was actually the applicant or whatever so we'll probably meet uh, in the very near future to uh, figure out next steps okay. i think because andrew left the chief i think uh, the application deadline for the age friendly funds is december 10th so we'll look at it in the next couple of weeks thank you Thank you, Councillor. Any other old business? 
right? Any business arising, we dealt with that as well. No, so okay. I, I do have some, well, I have my report, uh, which I'll mention a few things. Uh, so, spent a lot of time with my department heads this last couple of weeks, um, more than normal, because we did our road shows. And we went to all the districts. Um, we spent at least a morning or an afternoon in each of the districts. We feel that the meetings were very successful. Um, some of them had small numbers, um, but we are hoping that we're going to uh, make it an annual thing. And uh, thank you to anyone that attended. Uh, it was great information that we received. Um, great conversations were held. Um, and so we, we were really pleased with it. Everybody came back and felt really good. So thanks to all the staff that helped, a lot, helped with that from uh, booking things to actually attending them. Um, it was a it was, it was really good, really good experience. So that was something that we did. But um, just to give an update on what is happening in some of the different departments. Senior safety has been working on the transit fare assistance and getting pamphlets handed out to referral sources and the bus drivers. Um, and she's also working with Patsy on the virtual senior, seniors lunches and uh, putting some time in with time bank there. Um, recreation active living, again, working on trails. We had a trails presentation uh, earlier. Uh, trails and place making initiatives, uh, working hard on those things. Uh, she's also met with uh, North Highlands Nordic um, to discuss updates down there. They've been a, had a bit of a change in their direction on some things, um, revamped and regrouped. Um, those were some good meetings that she had with that. She's also working with Cape Smokey on the gender ski in school. She's looking to do some winter snowshoe hikes this year and partnering with organizations to make that happen. She's attended MPAL meetings in the last week or so. Uh, she, we're working hard on getting the word out for the trails funding that we have in place. Um, we have a new trails budget. Um, Councillors can, if you're talking to any trails groups, it doesn't have to be snowmobile, it can be any types of trails, uh, if they have anything that they're interested in, in pursuing, uh, we do have a little bit of money left there, so um, uh, we're interested in spending that on trails because trails are a high priority for us. Um, Lydia is also talking with Bold about offering a babysitting course there for young residents, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, she's been hosting Dalem Lake walks and they're going very well. Uh, she's been working on the community health board on presentations, working with accessibility consultations for accessibility initiatives, and um, looking for community garden funding to replace the beds up here. But there's also actually one of the road shows that we were at, we heard about some community uh, flower beds that need some help. So we're probably going to find some funding related to that. In tourism, Dan's department. Um, so we had a, a presentation to council on trails and an update, but some of the things that have happened related to trails. An RFP has gone out for the next section. Uh, he, they did a bidders meeting here where three bidders showed up. Um, uh, Athol Grant, who was formerly the uh, chair of the Victoria County Trails Federation, um, he's highly engaged and helping out with the staff members, uh, and they're all working hard on um, survey results and easements and working at the next stage, which is the, behind the transfer station and getting a parking lot there. Right now we're finishing up phase one of the trail. Uh, we're hoping maybe before the snow flies and maybe not in the cold rain, but if we can get out and arrange a walk uh, to see what's been done so we have an idea. Uh, that's part of the best practices experiences to get on it and feel it and feel good about it. Uh, we're moving ahead with trailhead upgrades and shelter improvements, uh, which we would have heard about in Dan's update. We're looking to purchase some trail equipment and trails groups that they've been meeting with. Again, as he mentioned, they seem to be pleased with the commitment uh, that we're making to trails because we know it's an important part of uh, development of the whole county. 
He was at the Adventure Tourism launch in Cape North last week, last Friday. It was well attended. Uh, he's working on getting operator listings updated on our website. Uh, and we're still dealing with washroom issues. Um, so looking for some ideas around that. Washrooms, you know, the summer might be okay because there's a few that are open. Now seems to be another issue on top of the washroom, the, the tourist issues, the tourist washrooms. This is more of a nowhere to stop on your way from Bay St. Lawrence to Bedeck. So we know it's an issue. Um, we're, we're doing what we can. Um, Seawall Trail, there looks to be an April start on upgrades for Seawall Trail development. Uh, the Cabot Trail food rally that happened last weekend was, well, a couple of weekends ago, was well received. Um, he's also dealing with Develop Nova Scotia on uh, partnering for placemaking sessions, which we'll be discussing in the future. He attended a meeting with DCBA. He attended a meeting with Cabot Trail Working Group. Um, working with ACOA on a winter readiness program and looking at a snowmobile fest to be happening in February. So uh, I think we've all been saying uh, we thought September was busy and then we thought October was busy and now we're saying November is crazy busy. So lots of things going on. Um, Public Works, we're still tweaking our definitions of what can and can't go in the garbage. Um, looking to get a traffic light put out at the scale house out here and the RFP for snow removal um, closed last week so we'll be looking at that stuff uh, at the, the tenders that came in related to that a couple of other things the courthouse review has um, we have a draft received and there will be a presentation coming to council in the within the next month yes um, so uh, we have the results from from this building again I mentioned the road show happened last week and this week um, over the last couple of weeks also I've been involved in the um, interviews that we have for a joint um, service at joint five municipalities uh, IT director uh, had one second interview today uh, we'll be having another second interview. Uh, we're getting close, so uh, we're we're working on having somebody that can help us with IT needs. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I have. So it's been busy. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So that was kind of old business, business rising, CAO, CAO's report, and new business all wrapped into yeah. one. We're getting close to Christmas, so we wrapped it up. <laughs> um, so any questions or comments of any of those? Councillor Longa. Uh, I just wondered if there's an estimated time for that meeting, for the rink and the community uh, people and groups. We don't have a definite yet, uh, but when we do, we'll let you know. Yeah, people are asking. They're eager. You know, we had uh, similar requests as well. So I think once uh, we have a meeting with uh, the rink tomorrow, our committee from council and some other um, elected representatives, so we'll probably get a better sense of when some of this information or some of this planning will start. And we'll have some dates and certainly uh, send them out once we, once we find out when they are. Any other questions or comments for this? in regards to the CAO's report and or new business. I didn't see any reference to the tagging program for, the, um, how's that, what's the latest on it? So we thought that, um, so council had requested that we have open houses or be out there related to the tag program. They were there with us. Um, we had tags available at each of the sites that we went to, but interestingly enough, nobody came forward looking for them. So uh, we have them. We have them available for sale here. Um, we have them, I believe this is the only site that we have them available for sale. Um, I don't have an update on how many have been sold but it is in place and it is available. Okay, great, thank you very much. And the information's on the website as well? Yes. Yes, great, okay. 
No other questions or comments for the CAO in regards to the information that you provided this evening. And we're going to do, move on now to the taxation update be provided by the CAO, please. Yeah, so um, Alex just gave me some information that I'm going to pass on to everyone. So as of today, we have 1.585 million outstanding compared to 2,066 this time last year. So we're 481,000 ahead of last year's number. Uh, of that 1.585, uh, current outstanding is 1.12. We kind of like having the current, um, uh, we are feeling better about the current number being a little bit bigger because uh, it's easier to pay your one year, we, we feel. Um, so current outstanding, 1.12 million uh, compared to 1.392 this time last year, so we're ahead in current by $272,000. We're also ahead in arrears by 200 and close to 209,000. So arrears uh, this year is 465,000 compared to 673 last year. So there were 1,790 reminder letters that went out in the last couple of weeks. Um, so the reminder letter goes to anyone who has any taxes outstanding. It's a standard letter that says, by the way, um, you owe us something. If you've paid it, please disregard, but um, we're sending you, it's a reminder letter. Um, for tax sales, we ran our first ad for that for our December 14th tax sale. Uh, it was in the Cape Breton Post on Saturday, and now it's going to be posted on our website, or it is posted on our website as well. This is a tender tax sale, so it will not be live. Our, we're hoping our next one after that is going to be a live one, but this is a tender one. It has eight properties on it. Um, the list on our website will be updated weekly if needed, if any of those come off of the um, potential sales. The second ad will be in the Cape Breton Post on Saturday, December 11th. Uh, our next tax sale after that, public auction on January 18th. The 60-day notices for this sale went out today, and the sale on that includes another eight properties. Um, so we're hoping to have one more tax sale prior to that, on prior to March 31st. Um, there's a potential of 61 potential properties uh, that we're, we've sent to legal we could potentially have all of those on it. Thank you very much for the taxation update. Any questions for the CAO in regards to the taxation report? Mm -hmm. We are good. One item that has not been on the agenda we had an in-camera session at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and we had a number of, uh, I believe, three or four recommendations or motions in camera, and we need a motion to uh, adopt the recommendations from our in-camera session at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I'll move that we accept the recommendations from the uh, meetings this afternoon. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Do we have a seconder for that, please? Second. Seconded by Councillor McLeod. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried, and those recommendations have been approved. We're going to move on to Department of Public Works concerns. We're going to start with District Number One, please. Thank you, Warden. Uh, just a few things. Uh, I want to thank TIR for the patching that was done over to uh, over in our area, but there were quite a few holes missed. Um, <laughs> especially in the Washerbuck area. And also some of the areas that were patched, uh, I'm kind of concerned that when the first snow plow goes over them, they'll have to patch them again. So uh, if, if to look at those areas again. Um, also, people in the area, I'm hearing quite a bit, are not pleased that the shoulders of the road uh, weren't mowed and uh, brush cutting wasn't done in the area this year. So something has to be done. It seems like every year it's getting later for for our district, well, for Victoria County, it being done. 
and uh, this year it wasn't done at all in, in our district. So once, once we have that meeting that uh, uh, our CAO talked about, hopefully it'll be looked at. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. District number two, please. Uh, no, nothing to report this time. Thank you, Councillor. District number four. Thank you, Warden. Um, yeah, I was had the same issue as Paul. I was really excited last time because the mower was in Rec Cove, and they did do Rec Cove, and that was it. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. If, I know they were having issues. They broke down after they did the sidewalk, and then they came and did the ditch, and then but they didn't proceed up the shore. I did send a letter to Steve, but I haven't heard back yet. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. District number five, anything, please. Uh, thank you. Well, just one uh, quick item. I had a report of a, uh, a pothole rut, it was described to me, uh, at the end of the St. James Road going on to Old Route, 10, uh, Old Route 5. Uh, apparently, it's hard to see, and most people navigate it without any problem, but I guess if you do hit it, uh, it has caused damage to vehicles and so on. So I'd just like to include that in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. It's duly noted. District number six. Uh, nothing to report. We're good. Thank you. Very good, Councillor. District number seven. Uh, I just had one call about road repair and one about a flooding issue that the uh, culvert was partially blocked and those, that email was sent off to Steve and I, I'm waiting to hear about the flooding issue but the other one was taken care of. <coughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Oregon. District number eight. Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, just a few this evening. Um, it's kind of a district concern, but I guess it falls under public works. Uh, I'm looking for a signage request from Cape Breton Regional Victoria School Board in regard to a stop in the area of the Cab Trail Food Market, which is a busy intersection in the district. Um, at all times of the day, there was a near-fatal accident there roughly about two weeks ago involving a child getting off the school bus and the driver in the back did not see the child and just it was that close which thank God it didn't end up the way it did and uh, I have been talking with uh, the bus operator as well with the local RCMP looking for a direction from them and they thought that it would be best to contact the school board I was in touch with Steve McDonald and he says that the school bus sign request has to go through the school board they pick the location where the children are pick, picked up and they are to do their best to select locations with good stopping sight distance. If they feel, that being the school board, that the bus signs are warranted, then they in return will contact the public works for a review on the location. So I guess, do I make a motion to have a letter sent to the school board asking for them to contact TIR to do a review of bus signage yes. in District 8. Yes. It's all confusing there, but I think right. it's... Right. Yeah. But that's okay, yes. Uh, a letter for that, and then we'll keep that on the docket for when yeah, we ask them to come and do an update. So that would be in the form of a motion, Councillor? Yes. You're putting that in the form I of a motion? I am in the form of a motion, and a letter be sent to the school board to do a review with signage with TIR in District 8 in that location specified. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that, please? Second. Seconded by Councillor Oregon. All in favor? All right. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. A letter will be sent. Anything else, sir? Yeah, there's a section of guardrail that is completely down in the area of uh, Payroll Valley. It's completely over the roadway and it causes, a, I guess, a danger to oncoming traffic in that area. I'd like to see that put on the list if it could be looked at sooner than later. Um, on a good note, I'd like to thank TIR for the ditching that was done on Fraser Road in St. Margaret's Village. Uh, it was very much needed to my, uh, uh, not to uh, make pun of it, but they said that it was the first time ditching was done in that road in over 30 years. So I think that's a great thing that the ditching was done for that uh, area of Fraser Road. And uh, hopefully it's not another 30 years for work's done to it. And lastly, I would like to know if we could just send out a letter of, um, of congratulations to Nelson Dixon, who after 33 years of service to residents north of Smoky, and wishing him well. He, Nelson was a, 
was the OS for the past number of years and was a great resource and it'll be truly missed and uh, we just send our congratulations from council to Nelson. We appreciate it. Okay, we have that's in form of a motion as well to send that correspondence to Nelson. Second. Second by Councillor McNeil. All in favor? Aye. Under reminded. Motion is carried. That's good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just District 3, just very quickly, I just um, want to acknowledge uh, the cooperation from Steve McDonald in regards to dealing with an issue on Downs Drive and Shore Road. He came and met with uh, myself and uh, discussed a number of pedestrian and traffic issues there, particularly with school crossing and um, children crossing the road and going to school. So um, he has come up with a number of recommendations that we shall, we shall see they will be implemented over the next couple of weeks. So they have been addressed and I want to acknowledge that. Another note, uh, just reference that came to me today. I didn't have a chance to let Steve know what uh, from Marguerite, the top of Marguerite Road towards the uh, Trans Canada <coughs> going down the hill on the right, leaving town. That shoulder is washed out after the heavy rain we've had the last couple of weeks. So to bring it their attention and see if there's some grading and some gravel can be uh, placed in the areas that have uh, given away. So those are my public works or TIR comments for this evening. So are there any notice of motions this evening? None. We are going to go to district concerns. We're not okay. Um, we'll be taking a break shortly, and uh, but until we do that, we will start with district concerns, and then if we have to be interrupted, we shall. So we'll start with district number one, please. Thank you, Lord. Uh, just a few. Uh, uh, questions from individuals about uh, our archives and uh, what will be done with them in the future. Uh, our, our archives person has retired. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's any suggestions on that. So um, we know that there's no one in that department down there. Um, there's lots of artifacts. We feel that they're not being uh, shown right now. Um, wondering if council is interested in maybe if we contact the Beaton Institute uh, to see about taking that information over. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was What's feelings of council? We get, we'll ask CAO to contact the Beaton Institute, see if they're interested in the uh, artifacts and historical documentation that's downstairs. Yeah. And we'll sort through it, and some of it will remain here just from our own, for our own information as well. Yeah. I'll make that a motion. Here. Thank you. There's please. motion on the floor. Do we have a seconder, please? Second. Second by Councillor McDonald. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Warden. Uh, also, uh, any update on the bridge street lights? Still hasn't <laughs> been fixed. I think it's over a year. Uh. Uh. So the, the bridge street lights, they're, well, we know that they're all out on one side. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, so, yeah, we had this discussion on the way down to the, the road show in, in Inganesh, I think. Um, it's still with Link. Link says they have to get word from TIR. We've contacted TIR to let Link know, um, but for some reason it doesn't seem to want to, you seem to be without lights for a while. Um, we'll contact them again okay. and try to find out why, why it's dark over there. Right. Thank you. And also, I'd uh, like a letter uh, to be sent in support of the Category B lobster fishermen. Uh, I guess, uh, it's a moonlighter policy that was uh, put into effect in 1976 by fishers in o oceans. And now the, the fishermen uh, are getting old that this applies to. And they're not, uh, my understanding is they're not allowed to sell their fishing license or pass it down to family members. So uh, I wonder if we could write a letter of support for them. And also, 
I did uh, forward on a, a website that uh, you could look at, and I, th I think for information about this too. Do we have a second for that, please? Second. Second by the deputy warden. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. Thank you, That's Councillor. It. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go with district number two, please. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's because I have my district concerns, but didn't show up here. So <laughs> just give me a second. Okay. Um, the first, um, I think the Councillor McDonald file letter for the school. I know we have the the deadline now with the parking issue. It's almost ready. But I would like to just remind if they have a deadline for the landscaping, if either they're going to wait until winter take over or or not. And if next oh thanks. And next and in the spring when you know with the flowers coming up, they start getting the landscaping ready. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. We'll include that in the motion for the letter. Uh, yes, can I make McDonald. a motion with a letter with uh, yep. Councillor McDonald? Do that. Yep. You're okay with that, Councillor? That being added. Okay. Thank you. So that's been moved and seconded. So we're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, I need a street light. Uh, it's a one nine five three with Sai Big Bedek. Uh, I will send you the form uh, stuff tonight. And I would like to make a motion to send a letter to the Minister uh, Tori Rushton and uh, Emily Keith about uh, regarding the status of the river trail in Iskaven. I know they finished the main uh, trail, but uh, we're still hoping they will uh, start doing this work. We have maybe two years now, or three years, waiting for some uh, answers about that. Okay, we have a motion to notified to send a letter to the minister do we have a seconder for that please thank you councillor longva it's been moved and seconded all in favor Aye. contrary minded motion is carried thank you uh, and i have uh, some residents asking about i know you have just a uh, uh, meeting with development nova scotia about broadband but they asking if there could be a public one like the last time the webinar was for to see the updates to the fall on what is next in some areas, if we can ask them to do that. Sure. Yeah, we can try. We will try again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it came to my attention too, uh, and I talked to you about um, about the hospitals. They're closed, and uh, they're asking why we don't put them in the buoyant alert. And now you explain me that it's just municipal issues. Yeah. So just want to just. Uh, yeah, so um, y you brought it up that uh, it would be it would be helpful, and I I agree, um, but we have passed a, we have a, uh, an administrative policy for how Voyant works, mm -hmm. and we only want to use Voyant for municipal services mm -hmm. because we feel that the issue could happen like if we start posting other people's um, information if we miss something and we're who they rely on to get that information, that we don't want to be the ones that yeah, that do that. So we have a policy in place that we only use Voyant for municipal okay. services. So just I want to put in because they asked me right. to ask. So yeah. I'm just putting so the table. Unfortunately, that's that, that's how we're how we're focusing okay. on this right now. Okay. Thank you. And that will be. Thanks. That's it. Thank you very much. We're going yes. to um, take a 15-minute break. And um, just during break, Lyle Donovan, her EMO officer, is here. Um, he wants to meet and speak with individual counselors, so he'll do that during our break. So we're going to break 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, we'll reconvene then. Thank you.
Okay, so we're going to reconvene council. And uh, I just neglected on my own District 3 around <coughs> Department of Transportation. I should have mentioned a uh, pothole that's up in Hilltop Crescent that we reported three months ago and it still hasn't been repaired. So I just want to add that to the list this evening. So we're going to move on to, I'm sorry, Hilltop Crescent. Yeah. So we were doing um, district concerns and we ended with district two and now we're going to go to district four. So Councillor Longva, any district concerns this evening? Uh, yes, the biggest issue um, in my district is the rock quarry on Smoky. Um, a lot of people are very concerned about that. Um, there has been a petition made and there's been letters written. And I would like to ask that we as a council write a letter to uh, Tim Hallman, Minister of Environment, Pat Dunn, Minister of Culture, Tourism and Heritage, uh, Tory Rooston, Minister of Natural Resources and Renewables, and our MLA Keith Bain, and uh, a copy to Peter Van Zuffen, um, because there's already a rock quarry on the top of Smoky. Um, if they need it for the work on the highway, on the road, the next section toward the ski hill, then that would make the most sense instead of driving over the new road they just built to uh, and uh, dr and driving rock over that, but one quarry on Smoky, I think, is uh, enough. And it's uh, like we want to uh, support trails and uh, ecotourism and the beauty of our island. So I don't think it's a really good idea. So I wonder if I could make a motion that we write a letter. Awesome, thank you. Um, then there's a busing issue um, for Adam Shore with Shoreline Adventure Tours, and uh, they inquired before they moved here because they're living, uh, you know, in Rec Cove, and their little boy's only six, so they did lots of inquiries about uh, him, and they said, well, he could register him in Bedeck School and then transfer him to Inganish, which they did, because that's much closer. But the, uh, they're having uh, issues with the bus because uh, the bus, they say, oh, it has, the list has to be the same in the morning as it is in the afternoon, and they won't allow them to drop the, the little boy off at the nearest bus drop. So I don't know what we could do if we could write a letter to uh, busing and ask if they could be a little flexible because we're asking for young families to move into uh, Victoria County, but um, we can't expect little children to drive an hour on the bus. Can we send a letter to the school board? Sorry, we, we can, I had to turn my mic on. But we can send a letter to the school board in that regard if you want to put it in the form of a motion. Awesome. I make a motion that we write a letter to the school board and the busing department and ask for them to uh, work with Adam Shore and his family. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have a seconder for that motion, please? Second. Second by Councillor McLeod. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Contrary minded? Motion's carried. Could I Thank add you. to that? Uh, that I know of a family. Uh, going to Rankin, actually, they're not in Victoria County, they're in CBRM, but the same issue show, uh, came up. They were told that uh, their child could go to Rankin, and now the bus isn't picking them up. And we were told here uh, at that meeting that courtesy busing would be accepted pretty well everywhere. And there's two w issues right there that... Okay, uh, so can we make it... Um can we incorporate his comments as well, that it's happening in several areas within the municipality? You're okay with that as yeah, the mover? Yeah, that's great. Okay. No, thank you. Um, then I have uh, another one. It's uh, the street light is burned out at Plaster Park, so it's very dark on that turn, and uh, that's just north of this, the uh, civic address 44880. 
uh, Cabot Trail. Trail. Okay. Um, and I did uh, this past week have a complaint about a dangerous structure. I just want to have it in the minutes that I did call John Bain and he was sending an inspector out to look at that and that's at uh, 47778 Cabot Trail. And I had a complaint about excessive garbage dumped at the St. Anne's turn, St. Anne's turn um, look off. And it's not just garbage, it's like furniture and appliances and it's like becoming a dump. It's like a beautiful scenic look off. I, is it possible for us to put a no dumping sign or a, a camera or something, I don't know, to, to uh, catch the perpetrators? We can refer that to Public Works to... What's the address? St. Anne's. The St. Anne's look off. Look off. Kelly's man. We can put a no dumping sign for sure. Yep. Thank you. And that's it for my district. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. And I just wanted to make sure the uh, motion to the school board was seconded by Councillor McLeod. All in favor? Aye. All right. Great. Thank you, Councillor. District number five, please. Uh, thank you, Warden. Uh, just one thing, and, and I learned about this at the road show, I guess, so it did have a purpose uh, the end that people were able to ask for some action. Uh, St. James Church in uh, Big Bredor was broken into three times, and they ended up destroying a door. Uh, and this is the second time I've heard of this, too. It's not what they take. It's what they kind of leave behind, you know? They, they smash and, and destroy things that end up costing more than the items that they may have taken. But anyway, um, so I'd like to uh, make a motion to take uh, $2,000 from my district budget uh, payable to St. James Presbyterian Church in Big Bredore to replace the door, a new door. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have a seconder for that, please? Uh, second. Second by the Deputy Warden. All in favor? Aye. Conjury minded. Motion is carried. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Deputy Warden. Uh, just more looking for information. <laughs> My memory serves me right. I thought there in the spring we talked about the heavy garbage pickup and that we'd also be doing like a hazardous material pickup, like paint cans and stuff like that. Um, I had an inquiry about some stuff and then I called Public Works and I was told that no, there were no discussions going on to that fact. So I'm just wondering if we did actually discuss that or. So we didn't talk about pickup of that, but we are looking to set up a hazardous household waste site oh. or uh, location at our site. <laughs> uh, it's in the works, but we don't have that available just yet. Okay, no, as long as it's being worked on, that's yeah. great. Uh, number two is, um, <clears throat> I know it may have been Lydia, but somebody was talking about uh, looking at sidewalks. Like I'm thinking of the sidewalks for the English Beach area. Uh, two or three locations are totally crumbling. Um, just wondering if we could uh, follow up and get someone to inspect those sidewalks. It's getting kind of late in the year right now, but definitely in the spring if we could get some work done to uh, Yeah, them up. definitely. I know I've seen pictures of them, and Public Works were discussing that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll refer that on. Okay, yep. greatly appreciate it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Um, Councilor Oregon, anything from your district tonight? Yeah, I would just like to talk about the water system repair. I mean, I'm great, grateful that it's been going on, but a little bit sooner knowledge would be great. Um, some people were uh, caught off guard with no water, and we kept telling them to go to the fire hall, which is accessible for, for water. Um, the next, I like uh, $250 out of my budget sent to the Holiday Helpers, North of Smoky and $250 to um, the Niels Harbor New Haven Development Association for the lobster trap Christmas tree lighting. And those two in one motion or is there more? Are you? I can do one motion. Yeah, okay. okay. Do, we, uh, do we have a second or further motion, please? Second. Seconded by the Deputy Warden, all in favor? Aye. Contrary mind, motion's carried, thank you. And I'd like to know if uh, the county, on behalf of us, have sent a sympathy card to Mr. John Burke and his family of the loss of his son, Robert. He's, he's part of the county family, so. Yes, yes he is, yep, yeah, we will. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you, Councillor. District number eight. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Um, just a few things this evening. Uh, one is, uh, first I'd like to thank the water personnel that's been quite busy in the district with water repairs and what have you in the last little bit. But I also would like to uh, acknowledge the fact that I had a concern from a, a local business in my district with water disruption service that the messaging wasn't relayed in a timely manner. They were, they were told that it was only 10 minutes prior to shut off. It was a local business establishment. So the point I just discussed with the business owner and if we could acknowledge to have public works just do like a courtesy day before if they know there's disruptive service to take place. Yeah, I think that we do when we know there is. Uh, no, I know we do when we know there's issues. Um, but a lot of these, so we had a presentation, how long ago was that, that we had the asset management presentation where these pipes in the ground are getting older. Um, and we can't predict some of these things. Like they, the things that happened this week were not scheduled. Um, uh, originally, then there was some things that got scheduled after that to uh, to um, accommodate what had happened for the breaks. Those the information got out on early, um, but when it breaks in the ground, sometimes we don't have any more than ten minutes. But so this, this was a planned uh, disruption. I and, the, and the the business in question said that they were notified ten minutes before shut off. Because they don't have buoyant alert and they're not on social media. And so they should get reasons. on buoyant. That's how we get our information out. Mm -hmm. Related to water breaks, they should be on buoyant. But they should be notified with before 10 minutes, is, I guess is the point that they're trying to reiterate to me. Yeah, uh, and minutes. I agree. I 100% I yeah, agree. Just the point I'm However, to if they were on buoyant, they may have received that information the day before. Possibly. But we're, we're know, trying to get better that. with all of that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm hearing you related to that. <coughs> okay. Yeah. That, that's it for uh, District 8. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a couple of quick items from District 3. The uh, Christmas parade is here on November 28th. I think that's Saturday. 27th. 27th, sorry. <clears throat> Four o'clock in the afternoon. Any counselors available? I think we made arrangements to to put a uh, not necessarily a float, but to put something in the parade as we usually do. So if you're available, please what let us know. It is uh, Saturday, the 27th, at four o'clock in the afternoon. So if you are available, we'd like to have you. Um, the Second thing I just wanted to mention, I was invited to the uh, Christmas tree cutting up in Larsh for the tree that went to Boston. So it was uh, very generously donated by Larsh. I think uh, we should send Larsh uh, uh, just a quick note of uh, acknowledging they donated it on behalf of the province of Nova Scotia and uh, let them know that we think that was most generous and well done on their behalf. So I'd like to make that a motion if I could. Uh, second for that motion. Second by Councillor McNeil. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. <clears throat> Motion carried. And finally, just to uh, certainly mention to Leanne and her staff, those of us that had an opportunity to take in the roadshow, it was um, a good process, I think, to get what our program is and our services are out to the community, and it was well done, professionally done. I heard a number of good comments from uh, the folks that uh, visited the site here, so I just want to acknowledge Leanne and her staff for doing that and uh, representing the county in a very positive way. So thank you, and please thank your staff. We do. We, okay. have, we have great staff. Yes, yes, we do. So Deputy, or I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Patterson, you wanted a few minutes yeah, on your just committee Yeah, a couple of things, Warden. Uh, I attended the... Uh, Victoria Inverness uh, Federation of Agriculture annual meeting two weeks ago, last week. I'm not sure what day it was. Uh, I, I don't think there were any uh, representatives from Victoria County, but there were a fair number from Inverness County. And I think, as uh, Councillor McGinnis used to say when he was here and, and a part of that, that you know Inverness County has a lot more agricultural activity 
uh, than we do. And, and as I would call it, big time activity. I mean, these farms are, you go through the Nevada Valley there and, and see some of those farms, it's just incredible. Um, so a lot of their discussion was, you know, electing that executive and getting reports and so on. The interesting one that I was kind of interested in was the uh, equipment exchange they have, equipment rental that they have. And uh, it's, it's an amazing cooperation, I guess, between all the farmers to, uh, to get their work done. The other thing that, that came up uh, briefly was apparently in November of 2017, we passed a motion as did Inverness County, to look at the issue of agricultural land. And uh, Inverness didn't do anything either, so we don't have to feel too bad. But uh, I think that, as Leanne mentioned, uh, coming up this week with the uh, up, up, what is it? I don't know if we get their name right. Uplands. <laughs> Upland. Yeah, with their consultations uh, that may come out and we'll have to deal with it as we go kind of thing. Uh, the second thing is the uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities. I forwarded a document uh, earlier today. I, I couldn't parse out what I just wanted to send you, so I sent you the whole thing. But if you, if you look at the first part, it's called a, a report to council. And then on page seven, it has kind of a summary. And I just look at a couple of things here. It, it, it was during the federal campaign they put this together, so they were lobbying the uh, federal parties, obviously. But uh, the number two bullet, the issues that they're looking at, housing, I haven't heard of that before. Climate, we haven't heard of that before. Broadband and infrastructure. So I mean, they're all common things right across the country that people are, uh, are dealing with. Um, also, they have uh, decided to have a live meeting next week in Ottawa, the 24th and 25th. And uh, it'll be interesting to see some of these people live that you've seen on the Zoom uh, call for a number of times. So anyway, I'll, uh, it's uh, the meeting is sort of day and a half, I believe, or day and three quarters, and uh, I'll report back when I get back from that. Thank you, Warden. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, <coughs> we look forward to your report on your return from the FCA. Any other committee reports to come to council tonight? Councilor McNeil. SEP so Senior Council meeting is November 24th, and if you're, it's a Zoom meeting, so if anybody wants to attend, just let me know and I'll get that Zoom link. Whoever you'll, you'll probably attend, and maybe Bruce, you'll be available too. Thank you, Councilor, and uh, <clears throat> Councilor McLeod and I met with the uh, EMO officer Lyle tonight and we're hoping to meet with the fire departments fire department representatives on the I think the 23rd so we will be able to bring back something from that report as well um, to council after we have that meeting do you have any correspondence other than no everything has been sent out all correspondence has been sent out to you um, any questions or comments about the correspondence that was sent out or that you have received? We did receive, I did receive a, um, a letter of concern from SABDA. And it was uh, signed by Ruth Schneider as chair of the St. Anne's Development Association. It was just raising our concerns, raising their concerns about the quarry that Councillor Longwood just very well spoke about a few minutes ago. So I just wanted to let Sab to know that we did accept their correspondence. It was tabled at council, and we will be writing back to them to let them know that uh, the motion brought forward by Councillor Longva tonight was unanimously supported, and that uh, we are in agreement that uh, we have concerns about the uh, quarry location at the base of Smoky. So that will go out as well. And thanks, Barb, for bringing that forward tonight. Anything else to come to council tonight? Our next council meeting is November 29th. Uh, I will be away for two weeks, um, so Councillor Daphne will be um, chairing Church. those meetings. Is there anything else to come to council before 
Okay. Yes, for a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Thank you for your time and attention. Oh, I should check. Uh, no, there are no questions from the public this evening that may have joined us with virtually, and we thank those who joined us virtually this evening. So, we have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Thank you. Deputy Warden has adjourned the meeting. <laughs>